Ah, uh, good day, guys. Week six, career planning and professional skills. What are we talking about? Interviewing, guys. What is interviewing? It's the one on one conversation between you and your potential employer. There's the ticket to your dream job. Land this, and your journey into your real life can begin. But how do you get great at interviewing? That's the question, right? How do you get great at interviewing? How do you get to a point where every time you get into an interview, you land the job? Whatever job you want, whatever job you think you deserve, you go and land that job. Well, first and foremost, in order to land a job, you got to know what you're talking about. You got to know what you are talking about. Let's go right from the beginning. What to do when you land an interview. You got to prep for the interview. So have an outfit picked, preferably a suit. If it's a corporate job, a corporate role. Women have suits too, not just men. Something black with a white shirt. Make you look good. Make you look classy. Make you look clean. Get a haircut. Trim your beard. You know why? Because appearance is the first thing people look at when you walk into a door. You don't have to be the most good looking person in the world. I know I am not. But I can definitely sell. And I can definitely sell myself in an interview. I think in the past three or four years, in the past three or four years, I've done, that I can remember, maybe six or seven different interviews while I was still working at this company. And out of the six or seven that I've done, I can't remember even one not giving me the job, not giving me an offer. I receive offers like it's, it's nothing. And so the reason, um, the reason why I'm saying that getting a, being physically, you know, get having your appearance set is it plays a big, 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 big role in helping you land your job, land this job that you're going for. Okay. So, so first off, okay, you go now you got the okay, now you look decent, you know, you got your hair cut and all that stuff, boom, 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 you're clean cut, you solid, good to go. Got a nice suit and everything. Now what? Just because you look good doesn't mean you're gonna perform good at the company. But companies are hiring you to look good. Now they're hiring to see can you actually get the job done? Right? So you wanna research the company thoroughly before you get to the interview. It's very, it's very important to do this because when a company, when you go to a company and you sit there and you have to ask the company, hey, so what do you guys do? Hey, so, um, oh, so, oh, you guys sell tools? Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, what else do you guys do? Oh, okay, really? Wow. So basically, you're showing the employer that you have no idea why you're there. You're just hoping that that employer is going to hire you. Now, if you go to an employer and say, well, I really like your product. Um, I like these features about your product, I like that feature about your product. I like how, um, you know, you guys did this and this year and this and that year. And I want it to be part of a movement as well, blah, 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 all that stuff. You need to know about the company, man. You need to know about what products you're selling. Oh, you know, or what services you're selling. You know, I really like your service. I really like your services. Um, I know a lot about them. Um, you know, knowing the company is extremely beneficial than not knowing what's going on in the company. So know your resume as well and be ready to answer questions about it. So, for example, I'll be sitting there looking at your resume and I'll say, hmm. In 2005, it says that you uh, worked at so-and-so company and that you did really well. Tell me about that time. You're going to need to know and remember that time and what you did and how, how it was a positive thing that you did that can relate back to the position that you're applying for. 
everything about an interview has to come back down to the position that you're applying for. The focus of the entire interview is that position that you're applying for. So if you're talking about your strengths and weaknesses, you got to talk about strengths and weaknesses that apply to the position that you're applying for. If you're talking about your uh, education, you talk all about education, how it led to what you're applying for. If you're talking about skills, right? Has to, you can't just say, oh, you know, I'm, you're applying for an IT job. You say, you know what? I'm very good at lifting weights. My skill is just pushing weights or throw a ball very fast. Or, you know what I mean? No one wants to hear that. They want to hear your, your IT, what are your IT skills? What are your skills? Well, you know, I'm very proficient in um, using Python and C++, Java, programming, but I don't know what the hell. So many different things, right? So that's what you want to do. Um, know your resume and be ready. Reassess your strengths and weaknesses based off the position and company. Okay, so you want to look at your strengths and weaknesses, right? Have those answers ready. Like, so 99% of the time people ask you, so, so what are you good at? What are your strengths? Tell me about yourself. And also tell me, okay, what about your weaknesses? Like, where do you feel like you can do better? Uh, where do you feel like you can improve or do you feel like you kind of lack and which is holding you back? So you want to be able to work out those strengths and weaknesses. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Super late. I work too much. Um, so you want to work out those strengths and weaknesses before you um, get to the company. And you want to relate that back to the job position you're applying for. Now, lastly, do mock interviews with a friend, right? You want to have somebody, like for me, like when I was getting my buddy ready for a job he was applying for in the same industry that I was in, I sat him down and I said, listen, this is the stuff that people are going to be asking you, okay? You got to have, you got to get ready. So we did mock interviews and the first time he screwed up so many times, I realized, I'm like, dude, imagine you had to do this tomorrow and you screwed up this hard. It's horrible. So we, we fixed out all his kinks and stuff. He went there, boom, got the interview, got the job, done. Easy money. Okay, so do mock interviews with a friend. It's always good to just do like a, just a little mock. It doesn't have to be, obviously it's not going to be real, but um, it's very good to try to, to get that out, right? Okay, so during the interview. Okay, so now you land the interview. What now? Well, firstly, be on time. And when I say be on time, I don't say be if, there's, if the interview starts at 12. Don't be there at 12. Be there at 11.45 so you can wait 15 minutes. And prep for 15 minutes. You can think, you can meditate, you can relax for 15 minutes. And the best part is, the person that you're asking this job, asking for this job, they are not going to have to wait for you. Now, every single time, this is some this is some very key information that I'm giving you guys. Every single time I go into a meeting, I always doesn't matter if it's an interview or a sales meeting, I always get there early. Just even if it's five minutes, ten minutes, I don't care what it is, I get there early. You'll never find me late. I don't like being late. I'll tell you why I don't like being late. When you're late, you, whenever someone's late, the first thing they say is, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I apologize for being late. I mean, if they have any sort of decency, they're going to say, I apologize for being late. Now, what the apology does is, let's say I'm negotiating, I'm, I'm, I'm going in there to negotiate a deal with somebody. What an apology does is it shows a sign of weakness right off the bat. You're already in a place where people were waiting for you. Now they're seeing you as someone who's unprofessional. Now they're seeing you as someone who is not a person of their word. So you have to, and on top of that, 
instead of coming in with confidence, like, hey, how's it going? How's your day? Good. Yeah, yeah. You're coming with, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Forgive me for being late. I had this thing and that thing and this thing. And I'm just going to sit there and be like, okay, all right, cool. All right, cool. And I'm already in my zone. I'm already ready. I didn't do anything wrong. Right. So you already have that guilt right off the top. And it's just not, it's, I mean, if you're really good at what you do, you can we can wiggle your way out of it. But 99% of people are, aren't good at what they do, that good at what they do. So just be there on time and prevent yourself from going through that. Make sure you answer the question your interviewer is asking. Very, very obvious. Relate your skills, accomplishments, and objectives to the need of the company like we already discussed. Provide specific examples when impossible. So when if you say... Um, Oh, at the company that I work for, I raised sales uh, significantly in the first quarter um, or sales significantly. Well, it'd be a lot more specific if you would say something like, well, the company that I work for, I raised I raised the sales by 50 percent within the first quarter by doing things such as following up with customers a lot more accessing new databases and reaching out to new customers. So be specific, right? Don't just say, oh, I increase the sales. I really increase the sales a lot. Um, provide specific examples when possible. Focus on um, the positive aspects of your training and experience. You don't have to apologize for any perceived lack of experience or background, okay? So if you don't have the background, don't ever say, oh, you know, I know I don't have the background, I don't have the experience, I'm sorry. You gotta come in with confidence. Be like, I don't need the experience and stuff. This is easy, I know how to do this. This is, anyone can do this. And you're not, you know, that's it, easy. Observe the people in office space to get a sense of the company's culture observe your surroundings if you do not have the interviewer's contact information request a business card so that you can send a thank you note guys the key in sales is follow-up interview interviewing is a sale you're selling who yourself what are you selling yourself who are you selling yourself what are you selling your services your skills um following up is a sale Following up is part of a sale. A real salesperson knows that when you send out a quotation to somebody, you don't just leave it and hope that they call you back. You gotta pick up that phone and say, hey, um, did I miss something? Hey, um, are we still okay for that thing? Like, is there anything I need? Anything I can do for you, blah, blah. Then you get feedback from the client and then you try and land the deal. Open it. Sorry, guys, got my kids and stuff. They're trying to go to sleep. I'm tired. Okay, interview formats. There's different types of inter interview formats. So the first one is an individual interview. So an individual interview is stuff that you guys see on a daily basis, just one-on-one -on -one interviews. Group interviews are when a group of people um, get are being interviewed at the same time. So it happened to me when I was at Cineplex. I went to Cine I was working when I was got my first job. They got a group of us and they started asking us questions and stuff like that. And we were just doing group interviews. Panel is when more than one person is like judging you and stuff and like interviewing you, right? So you have a panel of people, a line of people and they're at the same time. They're all asking you questions. <laughs> Technical would be like doing something that is in the IT. Like let's say for example, uh, the IT industry. Um, if you're going to have an interview there, they're going to want to see what type of work you can do. So they're going to, like if you apply for Google or Microsoft, they go on as a programmer, they're going to want to see you program and code um, in, during the interview. Okay, so that's a technical interview format. Um, multiple round means obviously um, going through a bunch of different rounds with different people, and different uh, management and all that stuff in order to get the job. Phone screen. Basically, just a phone call. They screen you on the on the phone. Um, they ask you questions they need to ask you before they call you into into an interview. And then you got the informational interview formats. The informational are basically when a 
someone interviews somebody else in order to gain some information. Okay, so like let's say you're interviewing your instructor and trying to get information off of your instructors asking them questions. That's an informational interview. Okay. And... Okay, wait. I'm almost done. Handling a bad interview. So what happens if you had a bad interview? You blew, you bombed the interview. Huh? What do you do? When, I what do you do when you bomb the interview? Okay, so the first thing you do is reflect on the experience. You got to look back at it and say, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? Learn from it, right? Just like anything in life. You make a mistake, yeah. you learn from it. You don't take, when you say you take L's, you don't take losses. You take learning experiences, okay? Uh, learn to forgive yourself. Explain what went wrong in a follow-up. Thank you note. Like we said, we all have to follow up. Use the note to add anything you might have forgotten to mention. Inform employer of any outside distractions. Like if you say, you know, oh, my um, family member is not feeling too good or, um, I'm, you know, I'm sad because I'm going through something. You can say that. And then never apologize for a bad interview. Don't ever show them that you think it was a bad interview because maybe in your head you thought it was a bad interview, but maybe they thought it was, hey, you know what, that was one of the better interviews that we did. So don't ever show anyone that you feel like you gave a bad interview. And that's it, guys. I'll see you guys in class.